So you can see I've made you a grid, and basically you can't go wrong with this chart because none of the ticks have the same features if you look at the sputum and you look at the mouth parts, okay? So if we talk about our number one tick, what's the tick you see 80% of the time probably? You see the dog tick? Deer tick. See the deer tick? deer tick? Most people say deer tick, right? Do you think? Is that? Yeah. Maybe. I agree with you. Okay. Yes. okay. I mean, you know, you don't have to agree with me. Most hospitals will say 70 to 80 percent of the time they see the deer tick. That's what I see at my house. I live just more than you in Massachusetts and spend a lot of time outside, have a lot of pets and kids, and you know we see a lot of deer ticks and then fewer numbers of dog ticks. So the deer tick, if you look at the sputum, the sputum is plain. So we talked about large versus small sputum and that differentiating males from females. If you want to look at species, you look to see if the sputum is decorated. And the deer tick is in fact a really boring, plain, just not very interesting tick in that department. The sputum is just plain old brown to black. And so we call that undecorated, plain. And then it also has the long mouth parts. So those are its two differentiating features. And then fortunately, the tick you see the second most commonly, I would say, is the dog tick. The dog tick, the American dog tick, right? And fortunately, it's exactly opposite of the deer tick. It has short mouth parts, and it has a really fancy sputum. And this is where I put in a plug for the dog tick being like the best looking tick because mm -hmm. uh, they're really pretty. They're all painted like snowflakes and they're all different and they really are decorative is what they call the sputum. So they're exactly opposite. That's why it's catty corner on the chart from the deer tick. Then if you want to then mix and match those parts, the Lone Star Tick has a decorated sputum but long mouth parts. And then the fourth tick that we really don't give very much time and attention to is the brown dog tick. And that's the one that's throughout the United States, but it's not one you pick up from going outside. That's the indoor tick that likes to feed almost exclusively on dogs. It likes warmth and it likes to stay in the kennel. And that's the one you may have seen on television where someone will be interviewed for a reality TV show about, you know, monsters invaded my house. And that will be a dog tick uh, came in the house on a dog and laid eggs. And then all of the larvae climb up the walls and they go into the drywall. And people either have to have major extermination or you hear stories about people moving out of their house because their house has been infested by the brown dog tick. So, not a nice one, but fortunately not one that we see routinely. And just for completion's sake, it has a non-decorative plain sputum and it has short mouth parts, so it's kind of the most boring tick also. It doesn't have really any differentiating features. It just fills out your grid in terms of the four types. And so that's basically it. You can't really go wrong. If you look at mouth parts and you look at sputum, you can identify any of the four types of ticks that we see in this area and you can tell which is male and which is female.